Hey everyone, I picked up this RGB color light sensor model TCS34725 on Amazon for about $7. This one was from High Let Go. It has an I squared C interface and accepts power levels of both 5 volts and 3.3 volts. It has a bright LED that shines a light on the subject and then records the color on a sensor that's located in the middle as we see here. The reason I had purchased this sensor is on my other channel I started making videos about an e-bike that I was documenting and on this bike there's a computer controller which at the time I was not aware but if you try and charge it the controller just sort of dies on you and the only indication you get that it finished charging is on the power supply itself goes from red to green and I was going to use that to make some sort of automation to let you know it finished charging. I've since come up with a better project to do this. There are a lot of devices you could unintrusively monitor with a sensor like this, but let's do a small project and see how the sensor works. Let's get started. For this project I'll be using my wife's ESP32 dev board in conjunction with a multicolored LED. This will be our first project we're going to do with the dev board. I went and soldered the supplied header to the sensor. Let's look at how we're going to wire up the first phase of the project. Kicking things off in our project, we're going to start with our ESP32. And this will be followed by a multicolor LED. Remember, if you're using an LED and not an LED module, you'll need current limiting resistors on RG and B. Ground, however, needs no resistor. Go straight to ground. That could be the ground pin of the ESP32. Blue would go through a resistor to GPIO2. Green would go through a resistor to GPIO4. And red would go through a resistor to GPIO5, completing the LED wiring. Here's what it looks like on the dev board. Four cables coming out as LED. That one white wire goes straight to ground on the breadboard. These three wires meet at a cross connect on the breadboard. And then I have the correct color for the last three wires that make their way into the corresponding GPIOs of the ESP32. I open up Platform IO and we're going to start a brand new project for this. Click a new project, select in a name. We're going to just call it Color Sensor. And then we're going to select our board below, typing in ESP32 and then I'm typing in dev because I got the dev kit v1 which I see on the bottom here so I select it and then I'm just going to click finish and that's all there is to it to configure the project and I'm going to wait for everything to load and it's eh, kind of slow to have all these windows and whatnot open up it looks like it's finished it's not entirely finished the activity is taking place in the bottom right corner so stuff is still going on and then finally We'll see the color coding overlay stuff on the screen and there it is and now it appears that it's done. First order of business I always do is I add a monitor speed of 115200 so I have a known monitor speed to tie in with my serial port. And that's it for the INI file I go to source and then I go to main and I got a little bit overzealous here and deleted my loop and setup so I'm going to end up putting them right back in. But first, I just want to define some colors against my GPIO pin, so I do that now, red to 5, green to 4, and blue to 2. Really easy, so we could use the color names and not the numbers anymore. Now, I'll re add my setup function, close the brackets there. And then I'll re add my loop function, and close those brackets as well. In setup, I'll add initialization for serial with the board rate that I set up in the INI file. And I'll set all three LED pins to output. We can see blue translates to two as shown here because of the definitions. I'm adding a simple routine here to help my camera sync up to the computer. And this is going to set it and write the word ready with it red. Just red and green and blue off with a delay of three seconds. And then it's going to say set after three seconds. And then it's just going to be green with red and blue off and delay three seconds. And then finally go with all three off. So we have a synchronized ready, set, go with a visual representation on the serial output and the LED to sync my camera up to. As you can see here, the range of the values for each LED is 0 to 255. I create three integers in the loop. We're going to write a small routine using these three integers to cycle through the colors in a way that's not too complicated, easy to understand and read. We have R, G, and B, red, green, and blue, all set to 0. And we're going to start our first for loop. And the for loop is going to have a couple of iterations from H going from 0 to 2 and incrementing once each time. So essentially three iterations. Now within these incrementing iterations is another for loop. 
and this one will be called I, and I will go from zero to 254, incrementing once each time. So H will run three times, and I will run 255 times. Now this won't be a perfect color cycle, but this will be good enough to make a demonstration. So within the second loop, we're gonna say that if H equals zero, then the value R equals I. So it's basically when H equals zero, R is gonna cycle up to 255 times. Else, if H equals one, then G, the second value equals I, and R starts to decrement. And finally, else, the third time B would equal to I and G would decrement because R would already be zero. So we have a counter that goes up, a second counter that goes up as the first counter goes down, and a third counter that goes up as the second counter goes down. And here is a representation of everything that's happening as it happens with a write to those values, an analog write that changes the color of the LED with each iteration that happens within I. Finally, a delay of 25 milliseconds is added to slow the process down as this will start over from the beginning abruptly as it finishes within the loop function. We'll press the test build function now and see if everything works error free. It's not a big program. We don't foresee any problems. Everything looks good and it's a tiny program. Let's install it on the ESP32 and see what happens. I'm gonna speed up this process. Now when it starts running, you're going to see me hit the ESP32 reset button to sync it up to the camera. Just like that. Ready? Set. And now it starts. And we can see on the left hand side in the serial interface incrementing the first set of numbers to 255. The second set starts incrementing as it starts decrementing the first set. And when the first set hits zero, the second hits 255. And the third set starts incrementing as the second set starts decrementing. The second set hits zero and the process starts all over. And as we look to our right, we can see as it happens, the light goes from red to yellow. And then it starts turning green. And then it starts turning blue, gets to the end, and the cycle starts all over. Now it's time to add the color sensor hardware into the mix. Continuing from where we left off, we will now add our color sensor. There are two connections for either 5 volts or 3.3 volts. In this example, I'll show the 5 volt connection to the ESP32. Ground could go to the power supply negative or ground of the ESP32. SCL will go to pin 22 on the ESP32. And SDA will go to pin 21. The interrupt and LED activate pin will not be used in this example. Now I'm going to click on Home for Platform I.O. Make my way down to the Libraries icon. Within libraries, I'm going to search for TCS34725 and hit the search button. We're going to see the Adafruit library comes up right here. We're going to select this one. With it selected, I'm going to hit Add to Project, then hit Select the Project, then choose my Color Sensor Project, and then I'll press Add. I'll speed this portion up. Now it's added. There's a Congrats indication in the top right corner showing us that the libraries have been installed, and we're ready to go. In the INI file, we could see that the library for this was automatically added during the installation. Attempting to compile should immediately produce an error. And this is because the requisite libraries now need to be included in our code. So we'll add them to the top under Arduino.h includes. And we got wire, our library for the module, as well as SPI.h. Now, if we attempt to compile it again, we'll see that everything compiles error free. Proceeding to add functionality to the module, we'll create an instance of that module, and we'll use the default parameters provided by Adafruit to do so. This will be called TCS, and here's the default parameters that they provided in their instruction. Within setup, we will run the begin routine for that device inside a small routine that'll ensure that it's connected, providing us a status outputting to the serial interface. This routine will stay in place, allowing me to sync up my camera. And I'm going to take this old demo routine. I'm going to leave it in the code, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment it out so that people can reference it later. Next, I'm going to declare some values as recommended in the instructions for RGB, C, color temp, and lux. Run the function get raw data and populate these values with the returns. 
and then color temp will be populated with the return value of another function and we use R, G, B, and C as a parameter for this function. Lux is also populated with the return of a function for which R, G, B are parameters. And this collection of lines right here just prints all the outputs to the serial interface where we could see it on the screen. And this is all from Adafruit's guide. There's nothing special here in anything I've done so far. So I'm gonna check it now, make sure it compiles error free, which it did. So now we'll push it to the device. Let's have a look. And I bumped reset to synchronize the camera. So we're seeing the ready, set, go routine appearing in the serial interface as well as the LCD. And now as I move this device around, we are seeing the output. It's meaningless to us as far as values go, but we can see that as I move this to different locations on the board, the values are varying but the output is 16-bit and our DAC is only 8-bit, so we're gonna to have to do some conversion. There's a function within the library to accomplish this task for which I'm gonna create three float variables right here. The function is called getRGB. Taking a pointer to those values as a parameter, it will return those values after the function completes. Technically, we wouldn't need any of this up top once we're using the getRGB below. We're doubling our efforts. We're going to add a serial output for the return values below. And we'll let both calls run with both outputs for comparative purposes. But we're going to write the values from the RGB one to the LED. Let's compile this and see what we get on our dev board. So as I restart, it's still going to do the ready, set, go to sync up my camera to everything. And again, it's still going to be making every call twice because we told it to do so with the get raw data and the get RGB. And when I take the sensor and put it up to different items, I could tell you if you're not looking through the camera, the LED is changing color appropriate with the color of the object that I'm pointed to. But it's so washed out because the LED is so bright as compared to everything around it. It's really hard to see in this video when I do this. You can see a little. I'm going to have to find a solution. Let's see what we can do about this. We're going to try using our 240 by 240 ST7789 display that I've used in previous videos, but this will be an updated adaptation to TFT ESPI since my last video. And we're going to start off with ground to ground. VCC is going to go to 3 volts. I got it in this chart going to 5 volts. I realize that's wrong. What is labeled SEL to pin 18. What is labeled SDA to pin 23. RES goes to pin 12. And finally, DC goes to pin 14. Now I'll install and configure the library. So again, I make my way to PIO Home and down to Libraries. And I could go to Search Libraries, but it's so popular, I see it right here on the left side on the bottom. And scrolling down to the second one, I see TFTP ESPI by Bodma. And this is the one I generally use. So I click Add to Project, selecting my current project color sensor. I click Add. And we'll give it a second, we see the congrats, and then it does a couple of things. And then we're ready to go. So I'm gonna check out the INI file, and we now see that the entry is over there. We go to our main CPP, then the PIO folder, and then I go down to Live Depths, and then I go down to TFTP ESPI. Finally, User Setup Select. And on this file, I shut off User Setup H, I remark it out. And then I scroll down to setup 24, which is for my 7789, and I unremark it. Then I make my way to the user setups folder, and I scroll down to setup 24 and select it. And then here, I just have to make a couple changes, two pins that I chose on this board. So I'm going to scroll down, and they're on lines 31 and 32. I'm going to change these from D1 and D4 over to pin 14, and then on this one, pin 12. And that's the only changes I need to make. We're all set up with the library. So now we'll make our way back to main. And here in main, I'm gonna include the TFTP ESPI library. Now an instance of that library, which is basically my LCD screen, which I've just configured. I'll set the init in setup and the rotation, though I don't really need to set up the rotation for this example. 
and while the ready set go is going I want the screen to be white to show that the screen is functioning. So all through here during this routine we should have a white LCD screen. In the loop area we have some code we no longer need. This is the get raw data code with all the conversions and the printouts. So what we're going to do is we're going to extend the remarks from the earlier code. So we're going to remove and add our remark statements right over here at line 73. So I'm just going to add the remark here, remove it at 60, effectively removing all of this code from our program. And we can see if you scroll up, basically the loop starts at line 74. Our program is now very small. So what we're going to do is we're add on to it. And we are going to write the results of the RGB to the LCD screen using the color 565 function that allows for our 8-bit format that we've done previously. So now we'll compile it. And now I'll push it to the device. Let's try it out. Here's the setup now. I have the LCD screen pushed into the breadboard where it is now wired in. Here's our sensor and here's the LED. And here's some colored pieces of plastic that I'm going to be using for testing. The test worked really nice, but again, that LED was washing out my video. We could see that it was problematic. So even though I recorded this and I looked at it and I said, nah, I'm going to have to disconnect this thing to continue. Now shut off for a better evaluation. I have yellow in there and blue. I realized I got to get the angle of my camera just right or the color gets distorted. You see, now it looks blue. And now I'm going to put red in. Again, moving my camera to just the right angle. And now we'll try green. And finally, we'll do purple. I'll be posting all today's code to GitHub. Link will be provided below. And that concludes this video on the experimentation that we've been doing with this TCS34725 RGB sensor. I hope you found this video enjoyable, entertaining, and informative. Do me a favor, hit that like button down below. It helps me out a lot when you do. And hit that subscribe button for more videos like this when they come out. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply? <laughs>